Hello there again. My name's Miles Pitcher. Last week in our video, we talked about assuming an FHA loan. Today, we want to focus in on the VA loan. My name's Miles Pitcher. I'm the owner of Superior Lending, located in Utah. I appreciate those who like and subscribe to these videos. Thank you very much. So again, just a reminder, the assumable loans that can legitimately be assumed are FHA, VA, and USDA loans. I had a comment from a realtor just last week that talked about doing a conventional loan wrap where they wrap it in and sell the home as kind of an assumption thing. Be very, very careful with that. That can trigger the due on sale clause in, in the note or the trust deed on the property. So be cautious of that. But let's talk about the VA loan today. So first question, and this is probably the biggest question or the thing that was mind blowing for a lot of us was, can a civilian assume a VA loan? And most people just believe that no, they can't. It has to be another veteran. Truth is a civilian can acquire or assume a VA loan. So we'll talk in details about two different scenarios, a, a veteran assuming a loan and a civilian assuming the loan. In either case, the buyer must go through the application process. They must be credit worthy, show enough income and be able to qualify. They start the process through the current servicer. You do need to check with the current ser servicer to see if they will allow it. The guidelines allow for it, but the servicer also has to allow for it. A big deal here also is that when you come in and purchase that home and assume the loan, you still have to pay the seller the equity they, they have in that home. And we'll run through an example that demonstrates this at the end. The veteran seller also needs to be aware that there is not automatically a release of liability given. Once the, once the assumption is done, they need to request a release of liability. Uh, that, that's a big deal. Don't forget to do that. Make sure you do that. With the assumption there is a funding fee of 0.5%, really not a bad fee at all. In, uh, in looking at what you get with doing a loan assumption. So first let's look at the civilian assumption. Again, the buyer must go through the process and be credit worthy. This is a big deal right here that, well, let me back up and say that when a veteran gets a VA loan, they have a certain amount of entitlement available to them. Or in other words, how much of a loan can they get through the VA? And when a civilian takes and assumes a VA loan, that entitlement is not restored to the veteran. It's not restored until the new buyer has paid off the loan in full, whether they pay it off by making payments or they end up selling the home down the road and paying off the loan. But please be aware that that entitlement is not restored with a civilian buyer. Please veterans, do not assume that this stops you or excludes you from purchasing another home with VA entitlement. You just may have to come in with some down payment. If you're right now in the market the way it is, if you're doing a, a loan assumption, you're most likely walking away some, with some sizable chunks of equity that can be used as down payment. Again, same thing as we mentioned before, the, this last bullet point, the release of liability will need to be a, obtained. Now. If a veteran is assuming the loan, veteran to veteran, they still need to qualify, be credit worthy. Funding fee needs to be paid 0.5%, but please be aware of how much lower this is than the standard funding fee that would happen on a purchase or a refinance. Again, that's assuming that the veteran has to pay the funding fee and they're not exempt from it. Now, as far as entitlement goes, assuming the buyer has VA eligibility and entitlement. Part of the process is requesting that the seller's entitlement gets substituted in by the buyers and therefore restores the entitlement. As before, the release of liability still needs to be pursued and obtained. Pros to this is obviously, boy, the buyer is going to get a much, much lower interest rate. I'm assuming we're in a rising, rising rate interest rate environment. This is something that should be marketed. It's something that hopefully brings you a premium in selling your home. Another benefit to, to the buyer is the closing costs are going to be much lower. 
and in the long run, the savings on this are huge. You can't, so VA loans do allow for a second mortgage to go in behind them. This would be like a HELOC or a fixed second if you need to be able to get a chunk of money to pay the equity to the seller when you're doing that. The cons to this is that it can be a large chunk of money that's needed to pay the seller the equity. You're not dealing with a normal loan officer, you're dealing with the servicers and possibly even the VA offices. That can be slow and frustrating. The Another con, again, as mentioned, that if it's a civilian buyer, your entitlement will not be restored until the loan's paid in full. And going a step further with that, please be aware that if even if you're released from the liability of the loan, if that civilian buyer defaults on the loan, it goes to foreclosure or short sale, your that VA eligibility you had tied to that property will not be restored. It's going to be permanently reduced because of that default foreclosure short sale. Let me give you an example. So this is a true client of mine from the past. He purchased October of 2020 for purchase price 434. He was funding fee exempt, so his loan amount was 434. Current value is estimated at 646,000. His loan balance has been paid down for 418. Look at that rate and payment he has, 1951 a month, and that includes taxes and insurance and a rate on a 30-year mortgage of 2.75. That is pretty odd. Awesome. Here, let's look at what would happen if somebody came in and assumed this loan. And so we have the assumption and then also what it would look like if they were getting a new VA loan instead of doing the assumption. We'll assume that the home is being sold at fair market value, the estimated value of 646. On the assumption, they're gonna to have to bring in $227,000 because they take right over the current loan balance at 418. There is that 0.5% funding fee of $2,094. They take over the monthly payment of 1951, keep the same interest rate, and they keep on the same schedule that the seller was on. So it would be paid off in November of 2050. Pretty awesome. Let's compare it against a new VA loan. Obviously, we're assuming somebody has full entitlement and great credit scores here, but you can see that there would be zero down payment needed because they're getting a 100% loan I assumed that they were, would have to pay an entitlement of 2.3%, sorry, not entitlement, funding fee. So their loan balance would be 660. Look at the difference in monthly payment, 3,600 bucks versus 1951. Interest rate is much higher and it's 30 years out. Hopefully this demonstrates to you the power and possibility here if of doing this assumption. So. I'll, I'll restate everything in a summarized version here. If I'm a buyer and I see an opportunity to assume a VA loan or FHA loan or USDA loan, I'm definitely going to explore that. Now it's going to probably require you to have a large down payment or obtain like a second mortgage HELOC to help with that large down payment but very, very worth it to look at it, to go through the process. On the other hand, if I'm a seller or a realtor representing a seller, I'm going to make sure I ask the question, what type of loan do you currently have on your home? And let's talk through and see if you have a VA, USDA, or FHA loan. Let's talk through this because being able to sell the home with an assumable loan definitely gives you a leg up and hopefully brings you a premium on selling that home. Again, as a loan officer, an assumption doesn't really do a whole lot for me because you're not running this through a loan officer. You're working with the with the servicers and the, the whoever the lender is on the loan currently. But this is definitely a huge benefit for, for clients. Let me give you a rate update. So rates have improved slightly. We are kind of in this broad range right here. As you can see on the chart, inverse chart, as the chart moves up, rates rates get better. As the chart moves down, rates get worse. We're still watching what the Fed does in July on how much they're going to raise. We just had GDP for quarter one of this year come out. It was negative. We are definitely watching what quarter two does because remember, two quarters of negative GDP is what officially indicates we are in a recession. 
we're watching inflation closely and seeing how that reacts and what's going to happen. We believe inflation is going to remain high moving into the fall. There will be more raises by the Federal Reserve on the federal funds rate to try to get inflation under control. As inflation gets under control, we believe that rates will get better. But we're in a range right now. I, we are watching it cl closely in this this range, believing that we still have room to get worse on rates, but we'll take the benefits or the, the improvements we've had over the past week. Again, my name's Miles Pitcher. I'm always happy to help people with scenarios, ideas, creativity, things to do in this market to just benefit clients. Whether you are located in a state where I'm licensed or not, we're always happy to help. Have a great week. We'll be back next week with another tip for you.